Hi, welcome everybody to the Orlando Sentinels editorial board interview with um, with candidate Joy Goffmer Seal. She's a state representative who is running for state senate district ten, which includes mostly Seminole and and some some of Lake, uh, some of Orange County. Um, we are going to spend some time today going over some of the issues since. As a two-term state representative, um, she will be very familiar to many of the voters in this district. Um, and, and there is a lot to go over. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the to everybody's favorite topic, which is money. Um, Florida has been enjoying a lot of um, federal money, and it's helped really keep the budget flowing. Um, what adjustments is the legislature going to have to make when that money starts to dry up? Thank you. That's a very good question. And I, I think that we are going to have to look at how we do our systems as far as we give big corporations a lot of tax breaks. And um, there's a lot of other ways that we do not bring in the income that we could to the state. So we're gonna we're gonna have to study that a lot. And as you said, I believe two thirds of the budget this past was from the the federal government. And so the other the other good thing though is that we do have reserves. So whatever happens, we have a little bit of a cushion to get us through to figure out what needs to be done. Thank you very much. Um, and then I, I wanted to move on to um, an, an issue that is uncomfortable for a lot of people to discuss, but has been forced into the forefront here in Florida and across the nation, which is the question of abortion access. Um, and reproductive health care also. Um, what is your take on the appropriate level of regulation for reproductive um, decision making? Where should the state draw that line? Well, I I was not for the 15 week band when it came up, not because it it seems it almost seems reasonable but but the problem is the examples that we're hearing right now of the woman who was 20 weeks pregnant and had a non-viable fetus and had to take off work and fly to another state which costs a lot of money and she was able to do it but other people might not be able to do that so that was a woman not being able to get basic health care. So that that's that's a big problem. And I also believe that when Roe v. Wade was overturned, that over half of our nation's population became second class citizens. We we lost our reproductive freedoms. And um so I yeah I'm a strong oppo opponent our uh, proponent for women to be able to decide how their body, their reproductive freedoms. It's also something they need to discuss with their family, their physician, their faith. This is all very personal and the government should not be involved in it. Um, I wanted to ask you about housing. Uh, specifically, I know that uh, affordable housing is obviously top of mind for, for everyone. I wondered if you had uh, specific ideas of things that are being done wrong or done right in 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 terms of uh in terms of funding them in terms of building specifically wanted to ask about the sadowski fund because i know that's been a uh that's been a hot button for years and years and been cut back unofficially and cut back cut back officially what do you feel is the is the best use for for that right now and and other uh, affordable housing projects well I feel that if we had done use the Sadowski fund the way it was supposed to be used, we might not be in, in this much dire straits at this point. So I do believe that we should be using the Sadowski fund for this problem. I think there's a it's a very complicated issue. I feel that there's a lot more factors involved. One would be 
the investors who are coming in and, and taking up these properties and some of them aren't even in the state might not even be in the country and running up the the rents that way there's uh orlando's doing some good things with affordable housing i've heard and um a lot of people are studying the issue and coming up with solutions so i would want to hear from those people and the experts i want to see how if other states dealing with this problem, if they have really good solutions, I would want to look into that as well. So I, it is definitely one of my issues that I'm very concerned about and really want to work in Tallahassee to try to fix this problem. I actually wanted to jump in and follow up on that. Um, one of our former colleagues, Jason Garcia, um, just posted something about um, use of some of the state money and the fact that some of the private housing that was built with state money is now being converted pretty rapidly to un unaffordable housing to cut right to the point. Do you think that perhaps some of the Sadowski money should be redirected to a larger portion of public housing? Or do you think that running it through the private market is still the way to go that would be something i would have to consult with the experts on that and and look to see what works what doesn't work uh it sounds like it's whatever they're doing right now is not working so they need to um try something else that's that's a very good um insightful question and I appreciate you bringing it to my attention because I want to look into that and do some more research and see what kind of solutions that people are coming up with for this very big problem. There is another issue that is riding along with the housing issue, which is Florida's property insurance market. Mm -hmm. Where is the biggest opportunity for the legislature to get the property insurance market back on track? That is a really good question. And it is, again, another very complicated issue. As you know, we went up to Tallahassee for a special session and the solution was to throw money at the property insurance to basically insure the insurers. And I did vote for that because with, without doing that, we thought there could be a collapse in the market as it was getting dangerously close. So that was not a all in capturing solution. That was just something to, to keep it going. So that is another issue that we have to go work on up in Tallahassee. There's so many different factors to it because sometimes people, they want to blame one factor in particular, like, for example, those people that go knock on your door and say you need a new roof, and then someone gets a, a new roof that's $50,000 new roof when their roof was already 25 years old. We know that's happening. And that's, that's a part of it. That's definitely a problem. So those but it's, it's not the whole problem. There's, there's a lot of other issues that's causing this problem, which is why we're, we're it, it's also building on the um with the climate change and the water coming up and and rebuilding in the same place and then it's just incredibly expensive to insure those properties right on the coast thank you for that i wanted to jump in with a uh with a quick question i know that uh governor DeSantis recently has has made news because he's he's removed elected officials for various reasons and i wanted to get your take on I guess the the specific cases that have happened and also i guess your view on the powers of the governor as it relates to the legislature some have called it overreach and some and some think it's justified how, how, how do you stand on that well i would call it overreach because there's a reason that we have the power separated and we we need those checks and balances so these people that he took away their positions, these were elected people, elected by the people, and they can be taken out of office by the people. They don't need a governor who's acting like a dictator to, to decide these things. So 
I think that answers the question. I, I don't agree with the governor having that much power. One of the biggest industries in Florida and certainly the dominant industry in Central Florida is tourism. Do you think that Visit Florida, which has been the subject of controversy in the past, um, is effective at marketing tourism in Florida? Is there, are there other things that you think the state should be doing? I have been support, supportive of Visit Florida. I do think that we need to market our tourism and um, it, maybe we need to look into, is it done efficiently? Is um could we do a better job that kind of thing but the concept of having visit florida be the one that's marketing our state i i think is a good concept switching over to healthcare for a bit um i want to ask you with, with the with the recent changes to uh to medicare and medicaid i, I wanted to know there, there are several specific aspects to it i didn't know if you had a good sense of, of what specifically you would support about the, the changes and the, the proposed expansions that have happened into working adults and that sort of thing. And I, I just wanted to get some, some specifics from you on your thoughts there. I'm not sure if I understand the question you're talking about changes because Medicare would be federal and I was not aware of Medicaid um, big changes. Is that something that just happened recently the, the thing that i think we're curious about is whether you believe that florida should finally expand medicaid to working adults i do i do i i think that's a huge mistake that florida has made repeatedly uh we those those are federal dollars that we could use to help the most vulnerable people these are people that are working full-time these aren't these are full-time workers who can't afford health insurance or don't have and don't have it through their work. And those are the ones that are falling through the cracks. And they're the ones who are going to have to use the emergency rooms for their primary care, which raises the expense of medical expenses for all of us. It raises the health insurance premiums and 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 just it, it's just a no-brainer to me that we should expand Medicaid in Florida. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and 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 head on what many say is the is the perennial biggest single issue in Florida, and certainly elevated to a high priority by our state constitution. Um, what more should the state be doing to invest in public schools? given that many say Florida is facing a looming crisis of a teacher shortage and that there are other challenges ahead, including um, the question of, of um, the inclusion of culture wars. I know that's a big statement, so I mean, a big question. So if you want to break it out, talk about teacher shortage first. To talk about the public schools first, is that public what you school, said? Public school teacher shortages, yes. Yeah, teachers. Okay. So I have been filing a bill every year trying to get the accountability for these private school voucher programs. And um, of course, the bill does not move because our current leadership wants to take away from public schools. And, and I'm saying that from evidence. Um, it, you see how we expanded private school vouchers even more this last session. And we're, we're not investing in teachers, not the way we should be. And uh, it, does, it makes sense that they don't want to, to go into that profession when we're not supporting them. And we know i'm i know i'm a product of public schools my kids are a product of the same public schools i went to and and i i just think public schools are great and they provide diversity and learning and um so i'll move on to the other question i think that was in there the culture war question the that's another reason why teachers are 
having a hard time because they're having to deal with all this culture war nonsense. Uh, an example would be the, the book banning and how that's affecting people who are in AP programs. They're threatening to, to dismantle those kind of programs by, you can't ban the books that they're required under the federal standards of the AP program. So it, it's a big, a big mess. And I, I think we need to, to go back and, and fully fund the public schools and invest our teachers and, and make, and make them want to be in that profession. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll, let's see, since we're asking um, every candidate the same questions, um, we have covered the ones that we've been we've been asking them standard. But I did want to ask you one more. And I know that you only have a small portion of of Orange County, but um, Orange County is going to be going to its voters and asking for a substantial investment in um, transit and in road infrastructure. Where is the state's role in this? Are they, is the state carrying its fair share of this um, infrastructure that is by, deemed by many people to be critical to the Central Florida economy? I would say the state's not doing enough and that's and or um orange county that's great that that's going to be on the ballot and um and hopefully will in make incentive for other counties to to do that and then have the state of course needs to pitch in so the, i guess the answer to the question is i don't think the state is planning long term on that i wondered what your uh what your view was, and, and this also speaks to uh, to transportation and, and tourism and such, what's your view of what could and should be done with the tourism development tax? It's it's currently being used solely for marketing uh, tourism, and but some have said that it could be used for transportation or other infrastructure. What's your view there? I got in trouble for answering this question before. <laughs> um, the people who are getting that money right now, um, but I, I just my answer to that question is that we should always take a look at the, these kind of things and make sure that we're using these taxes efficiently and being used best, basically getting the best bang for the buck. So, you know, we may look at it and say, yes, we should just continue to keep it as it is, or we may look at it and think um, there needs to be some significant changes. So I'm, I'm up for taking a look at it. Thank you so much. Um, we have come to the um, end of the time that, that we are doing with each candidate. Um, and I would, as we discussed, like to invite you to make a closing closing argument. But before we do that, let me just remind voters that um, this race is for um, State Senate District 10. It will be on the November ballot. And um, we did invite the Republican opponent in this race, um, incumbent Senator Jason Bordier. He declined. We do urge voters to check out our website for more coverage of this of this race, and um, and along with checking out the respective websites of both candidates, and um, base your decision on the candidate who best fits your personal philosophy and and um, and has um, think that you think has your best interest in it. So, and with that, I would like to invite you to tell us, Representative. So, um, what makes you that candidate? Thank you, and thank you for having me. Yes, I'm, and I'm Joy Goff Marcel, running for the Florida State Senate District 10, and that includes all of Seminole County and parts of Orange. I am that candidate that you're talking about because I'm I'm running on my values, my values for public schools and funding public schools, investing in teachers, my strong value of our environment and 
have clean water. We can all agree that we need to have clean water. I'm also running to uh, help with gun safety legislation. I, I sponsored a bill to make gun store owners keep their guns locked up at night. That, that won't even be heard up in Tallahassee. Something as simple as that, that people think is already a law. And I'm also running to protect women's freedoms. These are all things that my opponent is not running for. And also election integrity. I had a bill this past session because of what happened two years ago with the ghost candidate, a bill to make it where the dark money can be traced because right now it can't. And the, that's how we were able to have, see ghost candidates across the state. And thanks to the Orlando Sentinel and their great reporting, uh, there is no ghost candidates that I know of in this election. So I have a clear voting record. If anybody has any question about any of my voting record, I, I asked you to please contact my campaign or my, my house office to find out what the reasoning was behind the bill. But I have a clear voting record and so does my opponent. So it's, it's an easy decision to vote for me in November. Thank you so much. We wish you the best of luck and um, look forward to November.